Welcome to r slash Tales from Security, where we share stories of physical security, loss prevention, protective services, and anyone in general who gets paid to watch people, etc. And the first story is, truck catches fire, my boss says pee on it. This happened 30 years ago, but I still remember it as long as I live. It is a somewhat long tale, but you're on Reddit, so I assume you like reading. With that, let me set the stage and introduce the cast. I had just finished high school that year and did not really have a plan for my immediate future. At the same time, a very well-known paper mill in my country had a crisis, as most of their staff went on a long-term strike over a wage dispute. Now back then, companies were allowed to hire temps to fill the positions as best they could until the situation was resolved. I saw an ad from them in the local newspaper and of course applied. They were desperate for staff, so there was no back and forth or interview or anything. Simply, what skills do you have? This is what will pay, you're hired. The factory was in another town a few hours away, so I got on the bus and off I went. I won't bore you with the details, but what is important is that I got assigned as a way bridge operator, which meant I reported to the head of security. My job was to weigh trucks coming in with loads of lumber, and then to weigh them again when they left empty, so that the paper mill had a record. We worked 12 hour shifts, I was on night shift, got three meals a day and free accommodation in the company's employee quarters. It was awesome. Now let me introduce my boss, the head of security. He was about 55 years old or so. We'll call him Fred. He was a rather big man with a very stern expression, smoked like a chimney and spoke in a voice that would make drill sergeants weep with envy. He was also the funniest guy I ever met. Fred had been with the company so long he just did not give any flips and he had a very mischievous personality, which he promptly revealed once we had contact a few times. We became fast friends. Perhaps I should explain why we clicked. I was just getting off shift one morning when Fred came to the bridge, stood in the door and proceeded to use some very colorful language while brandishing a weight receipt and telling me how stupid I was for doing it wrong. He even compared my face to a V at some point. I was all of 17 going on 18 and had never heard half the words he used. He sounded angry, but his eyes didn't look angry, so I figured he was trolling. So I started laughing and told him to give me the receipt. I checked my work, called him over and pointed out to him that it was he that was the idiot and asked him if he had failed basic math in school. Then I finished by telling him that while my face might look like a V, at least my head was not full of SH, like some heads of security around the place. He stormed out in mock anger, taught me a few new swear words while winking and left. My coworkers, all temps, were in shock because they never picked up on the trolling and thought I was going to get fired and that Fred was a horrible person. I figured it's probably better to let them fear the boss than think him a clown, so I just kept quiet. The very next night, Fred walks into my office around midnight. Now, being a Waybridge operator on night shift meant that you had a rush hour around 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. when trucks came in and then again at about 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. when they were leaving. A few trucks would come in at other times, but most of the traffic was around the times mentioned. The quiet times were used to process receipts on the computer system, which was usually done by 12 a.m. So Fred comes over and tells me to take a ride with him. My coworkers try to look invisible and give me looks of pity, but I just shrugged and said okay. As soon as we get into the truck, Fred starts laughing and tells me I'm one of the few people who didn't crap their pants when he went off on them. It turns out that due to Fred's resting face looking like he wanted to kill you, his size and his position as head of security, people expected him to be a real mean SOB, so he played the role given to him. Then he told me we're going to go harvest some pumpkins. Yes, I kid you not, pumpkins. The factory had a few acres of open land and some people took it upon themselves to just farm stuff there. Fred took it upon himself to harvest the crops from time to time. And so we went and got a truckload full of pumpkins for Fred. Fast forward a month or so later, and by this time I had gone on a few night drives with Fred. Just normal patrol stuff, because he liked the company. We would swear at each other when he came to the bridge or spoke on the phone, and by this time my coworkers had picked up on the rather unusual friendship. We would phone prank each other a few times just for laughs. Important detail. I don't know, Fred was just Fred, and I just thought he was funny. Around 3 a.m., a lumber truck approaches the bridge and we immediately see the guy's trouble because he's not braking fast enough. There was a bit of a downward slope as he approached. He was filled with lumber. It was going to be bad. So we go into emergency mode and open the gate so that the driver could go straight through and hopefully slow down enough to not cause any major damage. The driver, meantime, is frantically trying to brake and I guess something happened because the next minute we see sparks. A lot of sparks. The truck slows down and stops just inside the gate and oh boy, the wheels are on fire. The company has their own internal fire department. They report to Fred just like me. So I get on the phone and call him. Me, Fred, we have an emergency. Fred, what do you want, F-face? Me, now's not a time for jokes, we have a lumber truck on fire. Fred, yeah, yeah, pull the other one. Me now panicking a bit because my boss thinks I'm pulling a joke. 
Fred, I need a fire truck here right now, you stupid effing idiot. There's a truck on effing fire. The wheels are burning. Fred, the wheels? Just pee on it or something. Me, very peeved off. Fred, here's what's gonna happen. I've officially reported an emergency to you, but you're too much of a D to know when playtime is over. So I'm gonna hang up now and just let the effing truck burn to the ground, and you can then explain to your boss why that happened. So I hung up the phone and went back outside to help clear the area. Now I should note that the call only lasted maybe 30 seconds or so. About two minutes after the call, the fire truck mercifully shows up and starts spraying chemicals. I don't know what they use, it's like a white powder if I remember correctly. Fred's truck is right behind them. He parks and walks over to me, and with a sheepish grin on his face he slaps the back of my head, not hard, and says, huh, so you weren't kidding. No Fred, I was not kidding. The truck was fine though. It turned out that the brakes had started failing and then locked, which is why sparks started flying. The rear tires caught fire from the heat of the friction caused by the locked brakes. The fire guys quickly contained it, and the truck only had to get some tires and a bit of wiring replaced. All in all, it probably looked a lot scarier than it really was, but I was young and knew nothing of trucks. I suspect Fred was experienced enough to realize the situation and was just messing with me. If so, he got me good. The second story is, we towed his car and now he's going to sue us. I've posted this before on r slash entitled people, but I just found this sub and I thought it would fit well here as well. Background. This all happened about 10 years ago, when I worked first shift at a small Midwestern university as a security officer. A large part of our job was to write tickets for students who parked in lots they didn't have a permit for. The tickets would then go through and be assigned to the student's account. Now, we couldn't always find out who owned the car, but we did our best to do so. There was one vehicle whose driver kept parking in the same place, which wasn't a parking spot, and was clearly marked as such. A bunch of hatched lines on the ground, along with no parking stenciled inside. By parking there, it made it harder for people to turn into a certain part of the lot. We must have ticketed them 20 times, and these tickets were $30 a piece, which means they owed the university about $600, but they kept parking there. Though unfortunately, we couldn't find out who owned the car and couldn't bill them. Fast forward a few months and I am at dispatch. There were two of us and we took turns between patrolling and dispatching. When I hear my coworker call in that there was a car on fire in that same lot. Needless to say, I called the fire department, who were on the scene within three minutes. Unfortunately, they had a problem getting to the car that was on fire because of said person parking their car illegally. They were able to get to the car eventually and put out the fire. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but they complained about the illegally parked car and stated that it should be towed. After talking with my supervisor's boss and getting permission, we called a tow company and had the car towed. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Of course not. Fast forward again about an hour and a half to two hours later, and the owner of the towed car comes into our office. EAS equals entitled a-hole student. Me equals me, obviously. AC equals awesome coworker. Student. Excuse me, but someone has stolen my car. Me, strongly suspecting who it was. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. What's your name and student ID? Student. Entitled a-hole student and my ID is 12345678. Me. What's the make, model, and license plate number of your vehicle? Student tells me the make and model, but I no longer remember what it was. Me. Ah, no, sir, your car wasn't stolen. It was towed for being parked illegally. Student. Why the F did you tow my car? Me. Because it was parked illegally. Student. This is fraud. Awesome coworker. How exactly? Student. You had no right to tow my car. Me holding a printout of students' tickets that I had printed out earlier and dramatically plopping it on the table in front of him. You have 20 tickets for parking where there is no spot, so you have no way of saying that you didn't know that you were, as I have seen them lying on your front passenger seat. Also, because you were parked there, the fire department had trouble getting to a car that was on fire. Your actions put other students at risk. Student. I don't effing care. This is fraud. You had no right to tow my car. Awesome coworker, showing student the part on the ticket where it states that you can and will be towed, and pointing out that all the lot signage says the exact same thing. We had every right to tell you. Student, this is copious fraud. I have no idea what he meant by that. And I'm going to sue. My father is the vice president of insert name of large multinational company here, and we will sue you and you'll both lose your jobs. Awesome coworker, well sir, the best of luck to you in that endeavor. Student then leaves in an angry huff. We contact the big boss and let him know about the SH storm that's coming his way. We didn't hear from student again and thought nothing more of the encounter, other than talking to each other about how entitled student was. A few days later, the big boss let us know that student's father had contacted him about the towing and that he had explained to him what had happened. The father, apparently being a decent parent, accepted big boss's explanation and let the matter rest. The best part for me, and a bit of revenge slash karma, since student gave me his name and student ID number, I can now assign all of the tickets to his student account all $600 worth. Keep in mind he couldn't sign up for new classes, change housing, or graduate unless the amount was paid in full. Also, if he illegally parked again, I could assign those ones as well. 
All in all, I'm happy with how it turned out. The third story is Bull Rush. I work as a security guard for a hospital and have been doing so for almost three years now. As a security guard for a hospital, I have more duties than just securing the facility, the premises, and keeping visitors from causing problems. I deal directly with uncooperative patients. The most common issue when dealing with patients is drug-induced or people who don't like being here. There's just one problem with all of this, and it's because they're on what's called a 2MD hold. It's a legal means where two doctors got together, reviewed the patient's chart and mental state while there and decided for his safety and the safety of others that they cannot leave the hospital. On a particularly slow night, which is rare for my hospital, we got a call from the nurse in the ED, emergency department, asking us to come stand by the room of a particular patient so she can break the news that they're going to be put on a hold and will not be allowed to leave the facility until the doctor deems them stable again. The reason behind our presence is the patient was already irate when staff was in there earlier and they believe the patient might crack when given the bad news. So we show up and talk with the nurse about our plan, if things go south, and what she should do while my partner and I take over. Once the plan was agreed on, we headed for the room with the nurse leading the way. As soon as she entered the doorway, we see the nurse bend backwards like the Matrix and step back. My partner and I weren't in view of what happened and why the nurse did that, but we looked at each other with confused faces and started to enter the room. Once we entered the room with my partner in front, he immediately gets a palm to the head and goes straight to the ground. Now mind you, my partner is a four-year active duty marine and isn't by any standard small other than being six foot tall, but he was no match for the six foot seven, 350 pounds patient, which they failed to mention such information. Now my partner is on the ground. I'm standing there for a second going WTF and kind of stunned at the size of this guy. Luckily for me, I'm 6'10", 450 pounds and reacted fairly quickly by taking my forearm and rushing him and pushing him to the back of the room and up on the wall where his feet were tiptoeing on the ground. I was pinning him against all the equipment on the wall, like the suction container, the oxygen tree and a few other bits. He finally calmed down after realizing I wasn't going to let up and essentially causing a lot of damage to his back and then we took him to our PES, Psychiatric Emergency Services Unit, where he can be placed in seclusion. The next day I came in and my supervisor told me he was pressing charges against me for all the damage I did to his back after I assaulted him and lifted him up onto the wall where all that equipment would do damage. The officer who took the complaint came to get my statement, and once I corroborated what my partner had already stated, he just started laughing and essentially saying I won't be hearing anything about this case any further. I was however told not to go near him or even be seen by him while he was in our facility, but to me that sounds like a great excuse to do nothing. Win for me! Thank you for watching! Have a nice day!